I'm sitting here talking with Scott Havermail, uh, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between short circuit protection and overload protection. Mm -hmm. So, if you would, bring us up to speed and, and highlight what those key differences are. Well, short circuit protection is really for something that's kind of very short or quick, that they would have a spike in voltage, say for instance, um, starting something up, shutting something off, it gives them a spike. Um, so it, it has a lot of inrush. Um, overload is usually something that's, that's over time. It causes a, you know, a, a fair amount of heat and so forth um, that eventually degrades and then it will blow the circuit, so to speak. Um, it, it's, it's kind of like if you had a trailer and you loaded it as you went, it would gain weight over time. So the tires would be gaining and they would heat up and they would eventually blow. Right. It'd be different if you took a sudden load of 10,000 pounds and it was rated only for 5,000, it would just blow the tires immediately. So that's kind of, if you will, a, a, an analogy of what you look at when you're looking at overload to short circuit. So with that said, why is this an issue that should be important to our customers? Well, our customers, of course, they're dealing with electricity all the time. Um, and there's things that happen in their plants. You know, things can arbitrarily shut down. They can start up big motors. Um, they have changes going on all the time. So what they want to do is they want to make their systems safe and secure, and they want to make sure that they have longevity that they're going to continue to run, that, that whatever operation they're doing is going to continue to run no matter what's going on in the plant. Um, because, you know, you can have plants that have multiple lines. Um, they're being fed by different feeders, things like that. So um, you want to make sure that when you have your circuitry uh, done and engineered properly, that no matter what happens, you should be covered. And what are some of the common questions you get around this subject? What is it that people want to know? Um, of course, a, a lot of times what, what I get is what are the right products that we need based on whatever we're doing. Um, you know, whether it's a, uh, you know, solid state, whether it's circuit breakers, you know, whether it's fusing, whether it's, you know, what type based on what we're using. Um, those are some of the bigger questions. Um, now, of course, you know, there's information that you got to have to be able to decide that, you know, what voltage they're currently using, you know, what the amps are, what the AIC ratings, um, you know, in the terms of breakers for, especially for a uh, short circuit type of thing is, um, do you want long, short, instantaneous ground, you know, based on the amps that they're using. Uh, it just depends on, on what they're using as to what they need. And, and do you have an example of that? I mean, is there is there a customer you've dealt with recently that? Um, well, yeah. I mean, we we of course we deal with customers all the time when it comes to um, to, to breakers. Um, what type of breaker? You know, how large? And then what are they trying to do with it? So then you decide. Okay, well, instead of using a H breaker, we go to an I breaker because of the amps that they're using. So then we have to look at how they're using that. Are they looking for a short period of time where they have over voltage, um, a long time where they know that there's going to be a peak, but it doesn't, we don't want it to kick the circuit out. So they can set those. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have customers all the time that um, ask those kinds of questions about, well, here's what I'm doing what would work in this situation. Can you tell me what some of the common mistakes you see being made in this area are? And Undersizing. Um, they think, oh yeah, I'm gonna only do this, only do that, and then eventually things get added to these circuit branches. And then next thing you know, they're pulling more amps than they thought they were going to. And so then they start having things trip out. Um, you know, and then of course some of the other things that, that happen is power quality you know, delivering sags, which the voltage drops, and then it, it, then it comes back, and you know, the, so they have that surging kind of thing. So, um, you know, protecting against those things uh, can be very helpful. And, and what are some of the biggest opportunities that you see uh, around what people are doing and what they really maybe should be doing? Well, a lot of times we see our customers try to get um, away with the absolute minimum because of cost. And, you know, we all understand cost is a, is a big issue. However, what I see a lot of times is they cut corners up front and then it costs them more in the end when they have failures okay. because now it's maintenance cost, it's downtime, it's uh, the, the, the uh, trash that may be associated with that manufacturing that it's 
you know, lost production, um, could be an impact to their customer. So a lot of times by sizing things right and making sure that what you have is correct will actually save you money in the long run. Um, you know, we'll see that some, some customers will say, hey, just give me whatever it meets the minimum, whatever's the cheapest. And that's, that may be fine for today, but for tomorrow and for maybe other things that go on, it may not always be the right option. Are there areas of resistance? I mean, do you ever get pushback? Uh, and if so, what is that around? Uh, it, it can be various things. Um, one, of course, is always, like, a, again, price, because that, that's, you know, at the forefront with, it, with uh, most customers. But a lot of times is, is the need is understanding and seeing the need. Um, and it depends, too, on who you're talking to. You know, if you're talking to a design engineer, that's one thing. If you're talking to a maintenance manager, um, that's another. And sometimes we deal with, you know, of course, the maintenance um, people who spec out what they want or what they need or, or so forth. Um, so it, it really varies in what we see. Some people just say, give me what I have, okay, which in a lot of cases is fine. But sometimes based on other things that have come on board, it may not be the correct uh, part anymore. So, so if you suspect something like that, in other words, if, you're, if you notice maybe a particular customer of yours is, is coming to you and, and, and asking for, you know, I, I need another overload, I need another overload, um, does that sort of spark something and say, hey, maybe I should right. get in there and have a look at what you're doing, <laughs> we can start saving you some money? Correct. Yeah. I mean, if they're going through overloads um, or fuses or breakers or whatever um, on a routine basis, then you start having to look at, okay, what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, and again, it could be maybe they've got an overloaded circuit um, here, or maybe they have um, uh, not properly sized parts. Um, or it could be, again, like I said, it could be a power quality issue. Um, so there's multiple things, and, and a lot of times you have to go down that list to find out from a customer exactly what's going on. Um, when do you see this? Um, you know, have you guys done any type of root cause on this so we can kind of start to understand how we can help? Um, you know, we can keep putting the same part in over and over, but that's definition of insanity. You right. know? <laughs> Doing the same thing over and over and getting the same result, <laughs> expecting a different result. Of course, you know, a lot of our sales guys are, are very well versed in a lot of this stuff. Um, and, and sometimes they're the ones that get involved. Um, the product managers, um, we're here to help with that. Um, and then, of course, we can have field engineers come out and help if they have needs, um, if there's something that's going on that maybe they don't understand. Um, we have some very good field engineers that... Um, you know, really understand this stuff very well. So in summation, the three most important things you'd like people to take away from this. Short circuit is normally a quick, instant type of spike. Um, the overload, uh, if you will, is usually over time that creates, you know, heat, which then of course heat degradates the, the, the circuitry. Um, and then uh, just remember that Eco is here to help that we have plenty of resources. Well, Scott, thanks for coming in today and uh, talking to me about this. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.